Okay, we're having some problems here. Maybe it'll pick up here. Okay, we're going to stop that, and we're just going to go on here. Welcome to Empty Cross Ministries Online Worship Service. We may or may not have some music tonight. We're going to try a couple more songs and see what happens. <clears throat> we'll just try a different one here. Higher ground. If it loads. Okay, we're going to dispense with the music, and we're going to go to a devotional reading. Oh, that's the neat thing about live broadcasts. When you have problems, they don't go away, and you cannot edit them out. Our devotional reading is Psalm 59. Deliver me from my enemies, O oh my God. Defend me from those who rise up against me. Deliver me from the workers of inequity, and save me from bloodthirsty man. For look, they lie in wait for my life, the mighty gather against me. Not for my transgression, nor for my sin, O oh Lord. They run and prepare themselves through no fault of mine. Awake to help me, and behold, you therefore, O Lord God of hosts, the God of Israel, awake to punish all the nations. Do not be merciful to any wicked transgressor. At evening they return, they growl like a dog, and go all around the city. Indeed, they belch with their mouth, swords are in their lips, for they say, Who hears? But you, O Lord, shall laugh at them. You shall have all the nations in duration. I will wait for you, O you his strength, for God is my defense. My God of mercy shall come to meet me. God shall let me see my desire on my enemies. Do not slay them, lest my people forget. Scatter them by your power, and bring them down, O Lord our shield. For the sin of me for the scent of their mouth and the words of their lips, let them even be taken in their pride. And for the cursing and lying which they speak, consume them in wrath, consume them that they may not be, and let them know that God rules in Jacob to the ends of the earth. And at evening they return, they growl like a dog, and go all around the city. They wander up and down for food, and howl if they are not satisfied. But I will sing of your power. Yes, I will sing aloud of your mercy in the morning. For you have been my defense and refuge in the day of my trouble. To you, O oh my strength, I will sing praises. For God is my defense, my God of mercy. Having all kinds of problems here. Dropping things. Uh, music won't play and everything else. Okay. We're going to try to play a song again and see what happens. This is called Through the Fire. If it plays. Welcome to Grand Fest.
Okay, that one's going to skip and bounce too. So we're going to go to our prayer time. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for this day and the beauty that has been in it. Father, thank you for the quiet times that we can reflect on your power and your majesty and your mercy. Father, thank you for the times that you grant us mercies and watch over us, Lord. Father, grant me the words I need for tonight's message. Grant me the wisdom to apply those words and grant us all the wisdom to understand the message. Father, thank you for sending your Son Jesus to die on the cross in our place. For it is by his stripes that we are healed. And it is in his name that we pray these things. Amen. We're just going to go straight to the message. And if it will come up now, okay. <laughs> We're going to talk about angels tonight. There's much confusion on the subject of angels. And I will try to lay to rest some myths. And more importantly, we will learn some incredible truths that will change the way we view the world around us and how we live. We should never, we should never underestimate the ministry of angels. They have a job to do in our lives and in this world. The world is not too interested in Bible doctrine, but in the last few years, there is a subject that has the world's attention, and that is angels. Hollywood focuses on angels. Even Oprah and Montel have focused on angels. There are TVs and movies about angels. <coughs> It's hard to argue with the person's experience if it does not agree with Scripture, then it's possible. The world may not want to hear much about Jesus, but angels interest them. It's a sensational topic, but for Christians, it's much more than a novelty. It's Bible truth that they exist and are active. Here are four reasons why the world is enamored with angels. Because of the spirit of hopelessness, people are looking for answers and for something to fill their empty spirit. And then there's the spirit of selfishness. Christians are called to be servants, but our society would rather be served than to serve. Angels are ministering spirits or servants, and people want to know what the angels can do for them. And we have the spirit of the new age. Our society is being conditioned for the end times. The world will accept the supernatural during the tribulation. The, anti the Antichrist gains power on a platform of signs and wonders. And then we have the spirit of curiosity. We are all curious about the unknown. People have questions about angels. Some of them are, what do angels look like? Are they female? Do we have guardian angels? How many angels are there? What is an archangel? Is it possible to see an angel? Do I pray to angels? What about demons? Are they real? How are they different? Will I someday be an angel? I will try to answer some of these questions tonight. The world is interested in angels for all the wrong reasons. But we have a good reason to be interested. There's way too much about this in scripture to ignore it. Some may ask if I've ever seen an angel. Well, maybe. Jesus believed in angels and referred to them many times. The Apostle Paul did the same. As far as I know for fact, I've never seen one. But the Bible indicates that I probably have and don't know it. I may have even been touched by an angel. And that's why I answer the question, maybe. Hebrews 13.2 says, be not forgetful to entertain strangers, for thereby some have entertained angels unawares. There's a story about a vagrant in Savannah who came to this house that was offices for a minister and the youth pastor. He asked for a cup of cool water, and that's all he wanted, which was strange. Usually it's money or a ride or something along those lines. He walked out 
and as the minister watched out the window, he headed down the very middle of the street. It was a big wide area. The minister turned and said to his buddy, who was the youth pastor, and told him to look at the guy. He came over and the minister pointed, but the guy was gone. I don't see how he could have gotten away so quickly. The youth minister said, Good thing you were dressed, or I'd say you had entertained an angel in your underwear. Who knows? Perhaps he was. Angels are mentioned over 250 times in Scripture. The word angel literally means messenger. Angels are created spirit beings. God created them as spirits before the foundation of the world was ever laid and before there was time. Psalm 148, verses 1 through 5, read, Praise ye the Lord, praise ye the Lord from the heavens, praise him in the heights, praise ye him, all his angels, praise ye him, all his hosts, praise ye him, sun and moon, praise him, all ye stars of light, praise him, ye heavens of heavens, and ye waters that be above the, wa be above the heavens. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for he commanded, and they were created. Angels have not always existed. They may always continue to exist, but they had a beginning which God did not. Job 38 verses 1 through 7 says, Then the Lord answered Job out of the whirlwind and said, Who is that? Who is this that darkeneth counsel by words without knowledge? Gird up now thy loins like a man, for I will demand of thee, and answer thou me. Where was thou when I laid the foundations of the earth? Declare, if thou hast understanding. Who hath laid the measures thereof, if thou knowest? Or who hast stretched the line upon it? Whereupon are the foundations thereof fastened? Or who laid the cornerstone thereof, when the morning stars sang together, and all the sons of God shouted for joy? Verse 7 has two references to angels. The morning stars and the sons of God. Why were the angels created? We see that in Colossians chapter 1, verses 16 through 18. For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created by him and for him. And he is before all things, and by him all things consist. And he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have the preeminence. They were created for the same reason we were created, to bring glory to God. Angels are not glorified human beings. Let me say that again. Angels are not glorified human beings. When someone dies, there's usually, somebody, there's usually somebody who says, God needed another angel in the heavenly choir. I don't want to burst your bubble, but that's simply not true. Humans do not become angels when they die. Even if their name is Clarence, like still trying to earn us wing after, wings after 200 years. Inspirations, Southern Gospel Song says, Golden street to walk upon, a bell I'm going to ring, a brand new angel in the choir, I'm going to hear her sing. It's a sweet thought and a cute song, but it is not scriptural. Psalm chapter 8 verses 4 and 5 says, What is man that thou art mindful of him, and son of man that thou visitest him? For thou hast made him a little lower than the angels, and hast crowned him with, with glory and honor. <clears throat> the Bible also says that Christ, when he came to earth, was made lower than the angels. He did this in order to redeem mankind and elevate him to a higher level than angels. The Bible says that someday believers will judge angels. That would most likely be the fallen angels. Hebrews chapter 2 verse 9 reads, But we see Jesus who was made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death, crowned with glory and honor, that he, by the grace of God, should taste death for every man. And in Hebrews chapter 2, verse 16, we read, For verily he took not on him the nature of angels, but he took on him the seed of Abraham. 
there are times in the Old Testament when Jesus took on the form of the angel of the Lord, and here God clarifies that Jesus came differently in the New Testament. One last verse, and this is a key verse, Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. These are fallen angels, but this verse shows they are not flesh and blood. Angels are invisible spirit beings. Hebrews chapter 1 verse 14 says, Are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for them who shall be heirs of salvation? They are spirits. They occasionally reveal themselves in a human-like form for a specific purpose. But this is not typical, and they certainly don't need a body or host in order to exist. A picture is worth a thousand words. So here's an Old Testament picture for you. 2 Kings chapter 6, verses 8 through 12. Then the king of Syria warred against Israel, and took counsel with his servants, saying, In such and such a place shall be my camp. And the men of God sent unto the king of Israel, saying, Beware that thou pass not such a place, for thither the Syrians are come down. And the king of Israel sent to the place which the man of God told him, and warned him of, and said to himself there, Not once or twice. Therefore the heart of the king of Syria was sore troubled for this thing, and he called his servants, and said unto them, Will ye not show me which of us is for the king of Israel? And one of his servants said, None, my lord, O king, but Elisha the prophet that is in Israel, telleth the king of Israel the words that thou speakest in thy bed, Jane. Did you get that? They believe God is somehow letting Elisha know their battle plans. 2 Kings chapter 6, verses 13 through 16. And he said, Go and spy where he is, that I may send and fetch him. And it was told him, saying, Behold, he is in Dothan. Therefore sent he tether horses and chariots and a great host, and they came by night, and compassed about the city. And when the servant of the man of God was risen early, and gone forth, behold, a host a host compassed the city both with horses and chariots. And a servant said unto him, Alas, my master, how shall we do? And he answered, Fear not, for they that be with us are more than they that be with them. They figure out that Elisha is in the city of Dothan. Now that's not Dothan, Alabama. Elisha's servant wakes up one morning, yawns, scratches, and heads for the front porch to get the paper. He looks up, and ah, there in front of him is the Syrian army. He runs to Elisha. Boss, we're in trouble. The Lone Ranger said to Tonto, The Indians are coming. They're getting closer. They're going to kill us. We're in trouble. Tonto replies, We, white man? And Elisha looks out and says, No problem. There's, there's more of us than of them. The servant has got to be wandering. Is this that new man to see? One, two of us, and look at them. Second Kings chapter 6, verse 17 reads, And Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray thee, open his eyes that he may see. And the Lord opened the eyes of the young man, and he saw. And behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire round about Elisha. 2 Kings chapter 6, verse 18 says, And when they came down to him, Elisha prayed unto the Lord, and said, Smite this people, I pray thee, with blindness. And he smote them with blindness, according to the word of Elisha. These were angels, the army of God. Though we cannot see them, angels are here among us. They may not be as many empty seats in here as you think. Don't miss the rest of the story. Here's a biblical description of angels. We should never underestimate them. What are the four reasons why the world is enamored with angels? The spirit of, the spirit of, the spirit of, and the spirit of. The questions about angels. What do angels look like? Do we have guardian angels? How many angels are there? What is an archangel? Is it possible to see an angel? Do I pray to angels? What about demons? Are they real? 
Will I be an angel? What does the word angel literally mean? Remember, it means messenger. Angels are created spiritual beings. Angels are not eternal beings. They were created just as we were. They had a beginning. Angels are not glorified human beings. Angels are invisible spirit beings. Angels are here among us. And we're going to try to close out with a song. Once again, see if it will play. Stay safe, be blessed, and stay in the Word. And stay tuned for more about angels in the coming weeks. And hopefully it will come on here. Here we go. <laughs> Maybe. Okay, that's just going to jump like the others did, so we're just going to close out. Once again, stay safe, be blessed, and stay in the Word. <clears throat> Excuse me, and stay in the Word. Keep the persecuted church in your prayers. Keep Pastor Sahid in your prayers. Keep our nation in your prayers and our leaders in your prayers. Till next time, and perhaps the music will play next time.